Welcome back guys. Chem 110B, Chapter 11, Equilibrium. This time we're going to determine the value of K, the equilibrium constant. This is really how things are done in the real world. You set up an equilibrium system, you let the reaction come to equilibrium, then you determine the concentrations, you plug it into the equilibrium constant expression, and calculate the value of K. And that can change with temperature, by the way. Okay, so these will be exercises 11C and 11D. A couple of things you need to remember. You have to know how your calculator works whenever you take a number to a power. It's probably going to be either x to the y, or y to the x, or the caret button. Now, the way to check to see whether or not you're doing it right is say you want to take 5 squared. Well, you'd hit 5, this button, and 2. Or 5, this button, and 2. Or 5, caret, and 2. You'd hit equals, and if 25 was the result, you know you're taking 5 squared. But if you said 5, y to the x, 2, you hit equals and you got 32, what you're actually doing in that case is you're taking 2 to the 5th. So it's a built-in check to make sure you know how to do your work. Okay, so we've got two different problems. I've already worked them out. Here's the wording of the problem and how you go about solving it. So here's... Oh, before we do that, remember we're going to ask you for the numerical value of k, which means leave k unitless, or spend your time to calculate and determine the correct units. Because you can't make an assumption what the units are. They can literally be anything or no units at all. But if we leave k unitless, you know you're going to be right, so please do so. I think that's the easiest way to go about your business. Okay, so here's the example problem. Find the numerical value, meaning don't worry about the units, of K, given the following information. We have this reaction, ammonia gas plus water in the gassy state is in equilibrium with the ammonium ion in solution plus the hydroxide ion in solution. And you're also given these concentrations. The NH3 is 3.2 molar. The H2O is 2.4 molar. The ammonium ion, NH4 plus 1, is 1.41 10 to the minus third molar. And the hydroxide is 0.011 molar. Okay, so how do we go about doing that? Well, if they ask for K or they give you K, you're going to have to write the equilibrium constant expression. There it is. Right there. K is equal to the products over the reactants. Taken to their power, their coefficients, everything's balanced out one to one. Okay, so all we have to do is then plug in our values. The ammonium is 1.41 times 10 to the minus third. The hydroxide is 0 0.011. 3.2 for the ammonia. 12.4 for the water. And this just becomes a calculation that's a multiplication and division. So if this first number has three sig figs, the second has two, this one has two, and this one has three, the final answer has two. Plug and chug, you get that. If you don't get that, chances are you did something silly like this times this divided by this times this. That's not what the problem is. So you have to nest some parentheses. I like doing it top divided by bottom times top divided by bottom equals that. Okay, and what would the units be here? Well, if we recognize that this is a concentration in moles per liter, moles per liter, moles per liter, and moles per liter, everything cancels out, and there aren't any units anyway. So we're done with that problem. All right, let's see what the next one looks like. Here, they gave us the equilibrium constant expression already, and they gave us each of the concentrations. So your job is to plug the values 
in, right? The carbon dioxide was 0 0.15, taken to the third power. The water, 0 0.79, taken to the fourth. 1.10, taken to the one. 2.41, taken to the fifth. Now, you need to make sure that you know how your calculator works and you have to be careful about it. What can often happen, somebody can take 0 0.15 to the third power cubed, multiply by 0 0.79, and then whenever you go to take it to the fourth power, your calculator automatically calculates what this is, then takes the whole value to the fourth power, and that messes you up. Oh sure, you could take 0 0.15 times 0 0.15 times 0 0.15 times 0.79 times 0.79 times 0.79 times 0.79, etc etc but what if this was power of the 31 and power of the 14 uh, you can't do it so this is what I do I got to admit this is what I often do in this kind of problem I will take 0 0.15 cubit get the result and write it down with extra sig figs and know that I have a two sig fig answer then I will take 0 0.79 to the fourth power. Find out what that is. Remember that it has two sig figs. See what I'm doing here? I'm getting each of these values. 1.10 to the 1 is 1.10. And then 2.41 to the fifth power is this number, knowing that it's three sig figs. Once I have these four numbers, there's no more powers, I can easily calculate this divided by that times that divided by that two sig figs in my answer, there it is. It's not always going to be a small number. Sometimes they're real big numbers. So what are the units here? Well, let's take a look what the units are. This is molarity cubed. This is molarity to the fourth. This is molarity. This is molarity to the fifth. Well, that adds up to molarity to the seventh divided by molarity to the sixth, which is molarity. So this answer would have to have molarity as its units, or it might have correct answer with no units. As long as we're just asking the numerical value, you're fine. And there are many, many, many more examples. And part of the reason why we leave it unitless is check this out. If you had something with molarity squared divided by molarity to the fourth, that would be the same as molarity to the minus two, or 1 over molarity squared, or liter squared over mole squared. All of those units are the same. It's pretty confusing. It doesn't really help us understand things for this class very much, so we have a tendency to just leave K unitless. This is about knowing how to use your calculator, how to plug things in right. Be careful with your sig figs and units. Good luck!